pink bollworm became a, a real threat as an explosive invader. The cost of the damage the pink bollworm caused was almost getting to the point where we could not substantially sustain ourselves. The pink bollworm is one of cotton's most destructive pests. First detected in the U.S. in Robertson County, Texas in 1917 and presumed to have migrated from Mexico, the pest gradually moved westward. By 1965, the pink bollworm was established in Southern California, Western Arizona, and Northwestern Mexico. Pink bollworm doesn't respect borders. It moves north and it moves south, east and west, because it's a, a problem which affects both countries the same way. When it hit those areas where it had extremely high biotic potential, it had the potential to produce very intense populations. The National Cotton Council estimates that U.S. cotton producers' annual losses to pink bollworm are more than $32 million due to prevention, control costs, and lower yields from plant damage. It became the cornerstone for all insect control and dictated or mandated huge or very large or very rigorous and very difficult uh, pesticide control tactics. Investments in USDA's Agricultural Research Service, or ARS work, led to discovery of the pink bollworm pheromone emitted by female moths to enable male moths to locate them for mating. The pheromone was synthesized and placed in sticky traps for detecting or monitoring moth activity and placed in cotton fields to increase the difficulty in locating females, thereby causing a disruption of the insect's mating. Additionally, USDA, ARS, and USDA's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, better known as APHIS, developed area-wide sterile insect technologies, including mass rearing techniques, markers to identify insects produced in the lab, reproductive sterilization technology, and delivery and aerial release of sterile moths. The pheromone mating disruption, combined with the mass release of sterile moths, provided a method to reduce pink bollworm populations in a large area. The marker technology provided a method to separate native moths captured in pheromone traps from lab-reared moths that were released. A sterile pink bollworm moth release program was initiated in California's San Joaquin Valley in 1970. From 1990 to 1999, Numerous area-wide experimental programs in California and Arizona validated and perfected the suppression potential of mating disruption systems using pheromone applications. If I go back to prior to 1995, we were out there spraying so much, we had no beneficials. And we had, most Arizona growers anyway in Arizona, was spraying anywhere from five to eight times a year. By taking it out and reducing that system, you also reduce a lot of problems with other pests. You reduce, you, you change the entire environment that the cotton is growing in. Since 1996, transgenic BT cotton has provided one of the most powerful tools added for pink bollworm control. However, since BT resistance management required some portion of the pink bollworm moths not to be subjected to BT plants in order to delay or prevent the development of resistance, not all cotton plants could be planted to a BT cotton variety. Additionally, some areas with pink bollworms grow an extra long staple, or ELS type of cotton, known as Pima, which does not have BT traits at this time. A key bi-national boll weevil and pink bollworm eradication planning meeting was held in Chihuahua, Mexico in 2001. And in an effort to eliminate this annual cost burden to producers, in 2002 the industry partnered with USDA APHIS to launch a three-phase program to eradicate this pest from all cotton producing areas of the U.S. and adjacent areas of northern Mexico. Because if we don't eradicate pink bollworm in the adjacent cotton growers of Mexico, there's no sense in having a program in the United States. Producer referendums approved eradication programs and demonstrated producers' commitment to share in the cost of the eradication program. Increasing regulations governing chemical control practices and the need to improve cotton production profitability easily justify eradication of the pink bollworm. Absent this pest, cotton producers will see a reduced need of insecticide use without sacrificing yield, resulting in improved profitability. And it's a green program. That's one of the neatest things about this is that it, on um, uh, my farm particularly, uh, we have not used any pesticides whatsoever on our cotton crop for the last three years. The technology used to eradicate the pink bollworm has been described as soft technology with little reliance on chemical control. The four primary components include 
Extensive survey. Transgenic BT cotton. Pheromone application for mating disruption. And sterile pink bollworm moth releases. Program technologies are applied on an area-wide basis. Intense sampling for immature pink bollworm larvae in flowers and or bowls documents the success of disrupting reproduction, while pheromone traps provide monitoring estimates for the number of adults present in the area. Projected costs to eliminate the pink bollworm have been developed for each of the three phases involved in the program. Growers approved assessments that pay for the program operations, trapping, and pheromone applications. Planting BT cotton is encouraged as an effective control measure, but that decision is left up to the grower. Growers pay the technology fee when BT cotton is used, but assessments on BT cotton acres are about half of that on non-BT cotton acres in order to encourage BT cotton use. The cost of sterile insect rearing and daily releases are provided by USDA APHIS as a cost share contribution to the program that utilizes a rearing laboratory built by California cotton producers for the purpose of sterile pink bollworm moth production. Before the pink bollworm eradication program, we would, uh, we would budget somewhere between $40 and $80 an acre, not knowing exactly what we're going to run into to try to control the pinkies and as my memory serves me correctly we never ever controlled them. And we saw everything from uh, oh, 20, 20 to, to 80 percent uh, damage on some fields that were left untreated and, and treatment could cost you anywhere from 50 to 100 dollars an acre. After the uh, first year of the program uh, the, the growers noticed uh, uh, a significant difference in their problems with pink borm. The farmers now are convinced the program is, is, uh, is worthwhile and there's uh, grower support for the program. During this time, trap lines across a desert region documented the migration capabilities of the moths, in some cases moving more than 150 miles, and highlighted the importance of success in all the U.S. and northern Mexico. The pink bowworm program enabled us and me as a farmer to still be in business. I don't think without it we would be in business because this pest would have completely devastated our crops. During the three-year verification, sterile releases and mating disruption applications of pheromone will cease. Monitoring traps will continue to be utilized to assure the eradication of this costly pest. The success of the program has dramatically reduced the need for several applications of pesticides, providing a savings for producers and meeting societal desires. Since the eradication program has been in there, it's just night and day is different. It's, just like, it's like a godsend. We do not have pinky damage anywhere. Since the program has been successful, we haven't uh, treated, probably haven't treated pink bollworm uh, in Pima cotton or in cotton in general for uh, at least five years now. There's not another program out here that's as soft as this program. It's a program that it has an end point to it. That's the good thing too. And we are very, very close to that end.